prayers, vision boards, success journals. These are all beautiful tools and, of course, powerful mechanisms for bringing about change. But if they're not paired with honest reflection and new choices, then really they're just lip service. Okay, in this video, I want to talk about becoming a millionaire and how do we achieve that? Does that even feel possible for you? Earlier this week, I was reading a blog post by Dr. John Martini, and I'll go ahead and link that below in the description. The article was entitled, Become a Millionaire Today. There's way more than a million sitting on your assets, I guarantee it. With, with just a short little uh, adventure into your introspection, you'll discover these if you look. And of course, that was interesting to me. And I think that's one of the keys to becoming a millionaire is that you've really got to follow what feels interesting to you. And personally, I believe we all have an internal guidance system that shows up in our emotions and our interests. And when something feels exciting and when it feels interesting to us, that's a signal that our attention is directed towards something that will ultimately serve us. And I guess the catch to all of that is, is something that I was reminded of when I was reading Dr. D. Martini's post. That feeling of interest or the things that our brain interprets around us in, in our reality as interesting are directly relational to what we value most. Money circulates through the economy from those who value it least to those who value it most. And if you don't have a value on wealth, financial wealth, you will store your genuine wealth in whatever you value most. And that means the thing that's interesting to you is not necessarily going to be the thing that brings you financial prosperity unless you're also valuing money, finances, and wealth creation and can draw a link between the two. So... Dr. Dita Martini in his article talks about how we all have the potential to build, you know, a billion dollars worth of assets over the course of our lives. But do we actually value that wealth creation? I have always had trouble saving money. My income has consistently gone up, but I have also had expenses that are always going up. And so even though I'm making more and more money, until the last couple of years, I was never able to really get ahead or to have money set aside for the future. And one thing that investing in silver, gold, and cryptocurrency has allowed me to do is to create enough of a buffer um, between my savings account and me, because if I wanted to spend that money, I'd have to at least go and trigger a sell order or go to the local coin store. And so that's been enough where instead of spending the money, whenever I decide that I want to buy something or something breaks down or I need to make a repair somewhere um, or I just want to go on a trip or, or, you know, buy something for myself. That's what I used to always do with my savings. Now that there's a buffer where I have to actually go and do something first, sell the, the asset before I can spend it, I've actually valued wealth creation more than I ever had in the past. In the past, I didn't value wealth creation, and so I would just go and spend the savings, and so I was spending the wealth. But now I have set a higher standard or a higher value on wealth creation, and so instead of going and spending the money when I need it, I instead look for opportunity in the marketplace to just go and make more money so that I can save even more, but have some of that that's available to me for spending. And I think where a lot of people get caught up when it comes to prosperity is this thinking that in order to make money, we have to value money at the expense of what we really love. And so what people end up doing is they learn how to make a million dollars, but they end up hating their life. And that's definitely not what we're aiming at. We want to make a million dollars and live a wildly satisfying life. And that's what, why Dr. Martini wants us to get really clear on the things that we value. Because if we can learn to value money, finances, wealth creation, and then that interest in wealth dovetails 
or it, it can dovetail into anything else that we give value. And so if you're into hot rod custom cars or RV renovation, you can easily monetize those things when you also begin to value wealth creation. And so maybe you start a YouTube channel on those topics or an email list, or you sell your expertise as a consultant or a mechanic or a handyman. You know, your own value structure is going to determine how much money you can make with the thing that you're really interested in. The key is to value wealth creation and whatever else it is that you're passionate about. And you may have heard the term ikigai, which is a Japanese concept meaning reason for being. And it's a series of questions that you can ask yourself that's similar to Dr. Martini's value determination system. And I, I highly suggest you check both of these out. I'll put links in the description. But to determine your ikigai, you ask yourself questions like, what do you love to do? What are you good at? Um, I think one of them is what can you be paid for and what does the world need? And then you Venn diagram all of those things together and see where certain things dovetail. And the overlap of what you love and what your world needs becomes your mission. And where, where what the world needs and what you can be paid for overlap, that becomes your vocation or the career that you really dedicate yourself to. And then when you look at what you're good at and what you can be paid for come together, that becomes like a profession or a potential job. And combining what you love with what you're good at becomes your passion. And so in the center of all of these things is an overlap of those four questions. And the crossover of what you love, what you're good at, what the world needs, and what you can be paid for is your ikigai, your reason for being. So when you ask yourself those questions, what is your ikigai? Dr. John D. Martini has this interesting tool on his website. He calls it the value determination process. And it allows you to dive into these questions even deeper by examining what it is you do with your space, your time, your energy, and your money. And over 13 questions, you know, the answers show you more deeply and help you understand where you're organized and, and where you're most disciplined and where you show up as being most reliable. And so after answering those questions, what you end up seeing is that what you think most about and the hopes and dreams or visualizations that you have about your future, when those things are actually beginning to show evidence of becoming true, that's really what you want to focus in on. That's a huge thing to consider. And the reason why that's so important to focus in on is that reality is this mirror to the emotions that you've got going on, to your value structure, and to the thoughts that you consistently think. And so if you're starting to see evidence in your reality that confirms that you're on the right track, that's a good signal that what you're doing is working. If you're having these big dreams and nothing is showing up that showcases some kind of progress, that should be a signal that maybe you need to retool how you're thinking about things, the framework of reality that, that you're operating within and the actions that you're taking. Because my experience has been when I'm on the right track, reality and life confirms that by putting me in the right place at the right time with the right people. And it's just a constant nodding of the head of, ah, yes, this is how it's supposed to be. And I meet too many people who've had the same dream for years, and yet there's no tangible ev evidence that showcases that they're on the right path or that they're progressing in any meaningful way. And being a dreamer is fun and it's required in many ways for us to reach for our true potential. But I think what separates dreamers and visionaries is the ability to accept where you're currently at and make adjustments to your own behavior to move in the direction that you wanna go more rapidly. And a big part of that is taking control over your attention and the things you value with that attention. And I believe we all have the potential to become millionaires and billionaires and really anything else we set our minds to. 
However, we also have to be honest with ourselves about whether our current value structure, our current framework for navigating reality is actually generating any results. Because prayers, vision boards, success journals, these are all beautiful tools and of course powerful mechanisms for bringing about change. But if they're not paired with honest reflection and new choices, then really they're just lip service. And so what I'd love for everybody to do is take a look at the Ikigai chart and take a look at Dr. Martini's article and let everybody know in the comments what it is that you value most. What's your Ikigai? My goal with this channel is to empower local business owners to tap into their true creative potential and align their business in a way that feels satisfying. That's the mission that I'm on for myself and others. And on this channel, we're going to be talking about local business marketing, alternative investment strategies, and things like cryptocurrency and precious metals, you know, really any, any alternative investment. Plus, I really want to always be reminding you that Feeling your feelings really is a kind of alchemy. And to tap into your true creative potential, we merely let life show up. And rather than avoiding or resisting difficult situations, we feel the truth of our current circumstances fully. We acknowledge and honor the feelings that come up and then make new choices aligned with our highest values and interests. So if that sounds interesting to you, I'd love for you to like the video and subscribe. I'm John Ray, and we'll see you in the next one.